front side, tail slide. Is a kind of trick that may seem easy, but is actually quite difficult to carry out. I mean, what a mystery! Front side 50-50s and front side 180s are both easy tricks. This trick should be somewhere between those two. So if it becomes significantly harder, there must be hidden science behind it. Just a brief summary. If your weight is far from the tail by leaning forward, you have to move it for a longer distance, which increases the chance of letting it hit the obstacle. Also, trying to lock in closer reduces the chance of the tail hitting the obstacle. So, I recommend keeping your weight on the tail side while trying to lock in closer. You're watching why the trick. Please subscribe. Let's start by sorting out common problems. We'll classify common problems into three stages. Reaching the top of an obstacle. Locking in. And sliding. We'll discuss what causes these problems in each stage and how to avoid them. If you're facing any other specific problem, please let me know in the comment section below. The first problem when you can't reach a top obstacle. In this problem, the tail may hit the side of the obstacle, or you may find it hard to pop high enough. The same mistake can cause these problems. When approaching the obstacle, both the obstacle and the direction you are heading are in front of you, which is the source of the problem. Generally, you tend to shift your center of gravity and body axis in the direction you are looking. Doing so widens the distance between the center of gravity and the tail, making it harder to receive enough vertical rebound from the ground. Without enough rebounds, you can't lift your body effectively. Also, if your line of sight is directed too far forward, and the distance between the tail and center of gravity widens too much, you have to move the tail for a long distance before locking in, increasing the chance of letting the tail hit the obstacle. The symptom worsens when this trouble distance problem and not being able to receive the rebound problem combine. So, what can we do? Since the primary cause of this problem is having your center of gravity too far forward, you should try to keep it a little farther back. Having your center of gravity on the back side weakens the force that the front foot applies to the board and may cause a rocket ollie. But it helps you receive rebound from the ground effectively, and a rocket ollie won't be a problem in a tail slide. Also, the closer your center of gravity is to the tail, the smaller its turning radius becomes as you rotate it around the center of gravity. Please imagine, when turning a board 90 degrees, the board with a smaller turning radius, which is on the right side, turns more quickly as it requires a shorter distance to complete the spin. In other words, when the radius widens, you have to push the tail longer, increasing the chance of letting the tail hit the obstacle. So have your weight closer to the tail than usual. We'll discuss more about it in the later part. The next problem is when you can't lock in. In this problem, the tail gets higher than the obstacle, but you can't hold it. You may also wind up doing a leap slide or shooting out your board. This problem occurs when you're trying to get on an obstacle before lifting your body, or when the approach angle is too big. The approach angle is simple. You should approach an obstacle at around 10 to 20 degrees. Let's not talk about this further than this. On the other hand, the position of the body becomes crucial. Obviously, to get your board on the obstacle, you have to pop the tail. However, if you pop without lifting your body, your board either stays low and hits the obstacle, or even if it gets on the obstacle, it can't stay under you. The only place it can go instead is in front of you, away from your center of gravity. Of course, you could bring the tail under the center of gravity by bending your knees. But it can be difficult, as extending your knees helps you overcome the resistance from the obstacle. So, to solve this problem, try to lower your body, lift it, and pop after that. 
In the previous content, I explained stretching the muscles before shortening them is key to generating greater power. Use that concept and make sure to bring your body to the right place first, which helps your board get closer to your center of gravity. Please refer to the previous content for more details. If you follow the steps so far, you should be able to lock in. However, the problem is you may not be able to slide even when you think you've locked in perfectly. Let's see why. In many cases, this problem is due to the board not rotating properly and causing too much friction between the toe side wheel and the obstacle which prevents it from sliding. As I said earlier, you can rotate your board more quickly by moving your center of gravity toward your back foot. Note that the moment of locking in is not the only time you can adjust the weight distribution. You can do it while approaching. By having your weight on the tail side before popping, you can keep the tail underneath you and reduce the distance you have to move it in the air, which also helps you maintain balance. Plus, where you lock in is also crucial. Trying to lock in too far from your body increases the chance of letting the tail hit the obstacle. Imagine the blue spot is where you're trying to lock in, and the green area is where the tail could hit. As you can see, you can minimize the green area where the tail could hit the obstacle by aiming closer. But this is when the most tricky part of a frontside tail slide kicks in. Because the obstacle is in front of you, your intention may go too far. Not to mention you should aim closer to avoid letting the tail hit the obstacle. You don't have to aim so far if you successfully shorten the turning radius. Try to lock in in the direction of your toes, not in the direction you are heading. Wait until the obstacle comes in front of your toes and try to go for the shortest distance between your body and the obstacle. Finally, let's talk about foot placement. It's almost like an ollie, but I put my front foot slightly narrower to support my weight further back. The most important part is having your weight further back, so foot placement itself is just a way of execution. Please find the most suitable position for yourself. Thank you for watching so far. There are still some remaining problems that we have to address. For example, you may encounter a problem that the nose falls and you can't hold the slide. Or a problem in which you step off your board and get on the obstacle. Let's analyze them in the following content. And that's all for this episode. You can always see the 3D models in this video on my website. Please try it and give me feedback. Thank you for watching. Until next time.